God, welcome. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. God invites all of us to be a part of the beloved community. God invites all of us to share in the good news that we are welcome just as we are. And we are loved just as we are. With hearts of gratitude, let us worship God. begin our worship together by reading the responsive sentences. Love cannot remain by itself. It has no meaning. Love has to be put into action, and that action is service. Whatever form we are, able or disabled, rich or poor, it is not how much we do, but how much love we put in the doing a lifelong sharing of love with others.
invocation followed by the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, we marvel at the mystery of life all around us. As we ponder the vast expanse of space, we are fascinated by distances too extensive to comprehend. The times we have measured are a tiny ripple in your eternity. Yet you have honored us by revealing yourself in the person of Jesus and empowering us by your Holy Spirit. May we experience your presence in our time of worship through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church. It's good to see everyone this morning, and it's good to see the sunshine after last night's storms. Uh, they kept us up for sure, but it's so good to see everybody this morning. We're glad that you're here or joining us on the video. And as you know, our church can be summed up in these words. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Following today's service, we invite you to please come downstairs to the parish hall and enjoy us for some good food and fellowship and friendship together. If you are a visitor with us today we would, and would like to know more about our church family, or if you have a prayer request, you can enter all of that information found on the welcome cards, which are in the pew rack right there in front of you, and you can place it in the offering basket, or you can also give it to a minister or an usher. In lieu of returning to the pew registers, we are asking everyone to please print your name on one of the attendance sheets upon entering, and this will help our staff out greatly. If you have flowers from your garden or a piece of work for our altar, you can speak with Connie Meese or Jean Beatty to pick out a date. And this morning, uh, our beautiful flowers from the garden of Chris Miller. Thank you, Chris. They're beautiful. Our programs for children and youth and young adults uh, will resume in September, along with our chancel choir as well. For our prayers this week, uh, we want to remember Lisa Hill. Uh, Lisa had an infection and was, had to be hospitalized for a couple of days this week. She's home now, she's doing much better, and she says uh, thank you for all of our thoughts and prayers as she continues to heal. Also, Taya Bartell, uh, she had her second breast cancer surgery on Friday, and she will begin treatments in just a few weeks. So we want to remember Taya in our prayers. And also Kitty McGrath, uh, she has diverticulitis, and she is in North Shore Hospital, and she'll be there for about a week uh, receiving uh, IV treatments. And I'm going to see her this afternoon and send all of your love to her. So we want to remember Kitty as well. And Christina Rivera, a granddaughter, granddaughter of Janet Dansbury has been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and so we will continue to remember Christina in our prayers. Uh, and as you all know, uh, the front pages of the paper, uh, the fires in Maui um, have just been devastating, so we want to remember all of those who have been affected by current climate change in our world. So let us hold all of these in our hearts and in our thoughts this week. And now at this time, I would like to invite you, if you're able, to please stand and pass the peace of Christ one to another. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor nor dust, rust, consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In the reading of these words, may we hear the word of the Lord. Amen.
Thank you, Angela and Robert. That was gorgeous. If you please take your order of service and flip over to our call to prayer, we will read together responsively. We are created in the image of God. We walk in the presence of God. We live surrounded by the love of God. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to God. Loving God, as the sun warms us, might we feel the warmth of your presence in our lives. We thank you for the beauty that surrounds us. We thank you for the cool waters that refresh us and the warm breeze that renews us. We thank you, God, for your steadfast presence around us and within us. For through a loving embrace of a friend and the comforting words of a neighbor, we know that you are here. We thank you for the love of this church family, for through each other, we find strength for the journey. 
Oh God, we pray for the condition of our world today. We pray that where there is violence, we would find a peaceful solution. We pray that where there is hunger and thirst, we might find all the resources we need to quench and satisfy. We pray for those separated from family or loved ones today. Might they sense your presence in a special way and know of your care. Oh God, we pray for those in our own church family who need you. We pray for Taya and Kitty and Lisa and Christina. Oh God, you know the needs of all of these, and we ask that you would help them to feel your love and your comfort, and that they might be on the road to healing, and might they know the love of this church family. Oh God, we seek to be faithful to you as we live out our lives, so draw us closer to you and to each other. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Jesus says it is more blessed to give than to receive. Please give as you are able.
those of us coming of age in the 80s will never forget our very first time seeing the cult classic movie, The Goonies. We remember the way we feel as Mikey and his pals sift through old artifacts in his parents' dusty, dark attic. The intrigue and mystery of this scene is not only something we watch with our eyes, we feel it with all of our senses. We remember the excitement as the clan of rowdy boys uncovers this old treasure map, and as local folklore believes leads to a pirate treasure buried somewhere deep beneath the earth. We remember the thrill we feel watching this group of misfits, the Goonies, as they escape villains out to kill them, stepping over decaying bones of pirates and plunge down water slides and into caves of glimmering dark pools filled with priceless jewels. And for some of us, we leave the theater desperately wanting our own epic treasure hunt. And perhaps for some of us, we return to our neighborhoods, bicycle tires pumped and ready, walkie-talkies charged, friends assembled in driveways, and we set off on pretend treasures around our neighborhood, looking for clues that might just lead to something unforeseen, something that might even make the front page of the local paper. Man, we wanted to be a goonie, didn't we, Gen Xers? We did. The Gen X goonie wannabes give birth to a new generation carrying forward the treasure hunting inclination. Over the last few years, I have been introduced to the latest treasure hunting phenomenon called geocaching. Geocaching is this outdoor recreational activity that uses a global positioning system, receiver, or your cell phone, and other navigational techniques to hide and seek containers called geocaches, or caches for short. And these are located at places marked by coordinates all over our world. And as of 2023, there are over 3 million active ones that can be found. Geocaching has become a game that's played by people of all ages. A typical cache is in this small waterproof container that includes a log book and sometimes a pen or a pencil. The geocacher signs the log with their established code name, their username, they date it, and they prove that they have found this treasure. And after signing the log, the cache has to be placed back exactly how it was found. And there are larger ones like these big storage containers that can also contain items for trading. Many of these caches contain mostly items like little toys or trinkets, more of sentimental value than financial. Now, I'm familiar with geocaching as my baby brother, who is almost 40, hopped onto this bandwagon a few years ago, and he has recently introduced it to our teenage son, Aaron. So, our cross-country trip a few weeks ago can be described as one grand family geocaching event. Right, Charlotte? <laughs> From the rushing waters of the Canyon Narrows at Zion National Park to the deep winding forest of Muir Woods in California to the hidden trails of the Grand Tetons, one thing was for certain. Aaron had his phone pulled up with his geocache app, and there we were off-roading to discover all these small hidden treasures placed all over our country. In our scripture lesson today, Jesus understands our affinity for treasure, so much so that he uses it as an illustration to paint a vivid picture of our lives. He lays it out succinctly, as only Jesus can do. What are the things we hold dear? What are we stockpiling to make sure we always have enough of? What are we searching for? What do we treasure? In the message translation, which is always one of my favorites, Jesus says these words. Don't hoard treasure down here where it gets eaten by moths or corroded by rust or even worse, stolen by burglars. Stockpile treasure in heaven, 
where it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. Isn't it obvious? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and you will end up being. Your eyes are windows into the body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. If you live squinty-eyed and greed and distrust, your body is a musty cellar, he says. If you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you will have. You can't worship two gods at once. Loving one, you'll end up hating the other. Adoration of one feeds contempt for the other. You can't worship both God and money, Jesus says. So Jesus invites us to take inventory of our lives today, to think about what we most treasure, to consider the eternal search that we find ourselves on. Because Jesus reminds us that perhaps the essence of what makes an abundant life can't be placed in an Amazon cart or bought down at the Tesla dealership. Although, if Jesus were speaking to us in 2023, I am certain that he might agree that seeing the Taylor Swift Eras tour is a treasure of the heart. I'm just saying. I truly believe. And I still want to go. But I digress. Jesus calls us to a deeper sense of what it means to discover treasure that cannot be quantified, but instead felt, lived, and experienced in our hearts. Ultimately, Jesus calls us to this place of knowing that we have enough, that we are enough. And the treasure we long for is within us, and it is within each other. As Barbara Brown Taylor puts it so beautifully, no one longs for what he or she already has. And yet the accumulated insight of those wise about the spiritual life suggests that the reason so many of us cannot see the red X that marks the spot is because we're standing on it. The treasure we seek requires no lengthy expedition, no expensive equipment, no superior aptitude. All we lack is the willingness to imagine that we already have everything we need, she says. We hear Jesus' words to us to store up treasures we can't quantify, to search for the eternal. But we read the headlines and we see our neighbors and the message of the heart falls deaf. Even in this very affluent part of our own country, we all live in a state of scarcity from time to time. There isn't enough to go around. We need to make sure we have enough Enough means something different for all of us. But we all live with the same sense of urgency at times, don't we? We're continually searching for that next thing that will satisfy us, the next thing that will fill this void that we have, because we want to be full. We want to be abundant, like Jesus describes. And the road is bumpy, and it's often confusing as we take this journey to uncover all those things that really matter in this life. Driving around the summer, have you all seen the estate sale signs everywhere? Big signs on main streets with arrows pointing you to the front entrance of the home. Big estate sale today. Everything must go. Have you ever been to one of these? Jacob and I have been to plenty just on our street over the last 16 years. It's always a very spiritual and sobering activity for me. In most cases, the items on display for sale belonged to the last living matriarch or patriarch of the home who has recently passed. The children and the grandchildren, and oftentimes the great-grandchildren, live in other states or countries, and they've come back to sell their relatives home, along with all of their beloved treasures, and all for a grand low price. That is, of course, negotiable. Strangers and bargain hunters from near and far walk through the home, making comments or judgments about everything from furniture to picture frames and timeless kitchen cutlery. I hear folks haggling over a piece of artwork. 
one looking to make money and the other looking to save money. Being at these cells reminds me of all the things that are in a home are merely things. There was a person, a family, a whole life that resided in this space for generations. What is left now are pots and pans and trinkets and mismatched bar stools and dining chairs. And with every item tossed about or shuffled through, I wonder what value that item had to the person who lived there. I wonder if they lived with a sense of scarcity at times, or urgency of getting that new dining room set at the time. Was this now dusty item once a treasure for them? But I wonder about the things we estate sale wanderers can't see. What eternal treasures did this person have? How did their influence shape their family and shape their community? Did they pass on treasures and gifts that can't be seen, are marked with a price tag, but only felt throughout generations that have yet to even come? This week in the prayer chain, I shared this excerpt from one of Parker Palmer's writings on abundance. And it resonated so much that I wanted to share it in its entirety with you this morning as it fits into our sermon. In this piece, he hits at the root of today's message, which is noticing the abundance in our lives and storing up what matters and living from this grace. Palmer says, Where I live, summer's keynote is abundance. The forest filled with undergrowth, the trees with fruit, the meadows with wildflowers and grass, the fields with wheat and corn, the gardens with zucchini and the yards with weeds. Nature does not always produce abundance, of course, but nature takes us through a reliable cycle of scarcity and abundance, which in times of deprivation foreshadow an eventual return to the abundant fields. This fact of nature is in sharp contrast, he says, to a human nature, which seems to regard perpetual scarcity. Daily, I am astonished at how readily I believe that something I need is in short supply. If I hoard possessions, it is because I believe there are not enough to go around. If I struggle with others over power, it is because I believe that power is limited. If I become jealous in a relationship, it's because I believe that when you get too much love, then I will be shortchanged, he says. In the human world, abundance does not happen automatically. It's created when we have the sense to choose community, he says, to come together to celebrate and share our common store. Whether the scarce resource is money or love or power or words, the true law of life is that we generate more of whatever seems scarce by trusting its supply and passing it one to another. Authentic abundance does not lie in secured stockpiles of food or cash or influence or affection, he says, but belonging to a community where we can give these goods to each other when we need them and receive them from others when we too are in need. I thought that was so beautiful, and I think that describes what we try to do here so beautifully. Our lives are kind of like these geocaches that Aaron has come to love. They are shared treasures between strangers, world travelers, and community members. The joy of the treasure is not a worth that can be quantified, but simply found in this spiritual value. It's the treasure of signing our name to something to say, I have been here. It's the witnessing of names, the witnessing of lives recorded, and we add ours in solidarity to be remembered for something. For we are in search of these things that last beyond our numbered years on this earth. Like those who have come before us, we too seek to stockpile love and kindness and generosity and friendship and time together and peace. Because these are the treasures that never rust or get destroyed by moths or forgotten at an estate sale. Being a part of a community and this family of faith, it reminds us we have what we need within ourselves, 
within God's tender love for each other and for us, and within our love for each other here. Because, you know, like Jesus says, it's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you're going to want to be, and you're going to end up being. May this be our prayer and our hope. Amen. Go now into God's good world, and as you go, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face. May the rains fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, may we be held in the palm of God's loving hand. Amen. <laughs>